Hello, everybody. This is Raul Ramirez. I'm here uh, from the Catch Wrestling Alliance, and here we strive to keep real wrestling alive. Hopefully, you guys can hear me. Let me know if there's any problems um, just by, uh, you know, you know, just write it in the chat. So, um, so without further ado, so far, it seems like uh, the sound and everything should be okay. But yeah, let, let me know if there's any problems. So I'm still working on trying to make it uh, even better. Uh, got um, just trying all things I can do. <laughs> so uh, yeah, I'm using a different computer right now. Uh, also, hopefully everything's all right. Uh, should be able to use this better microphone and all that. So let's see what happens. <laughs> okay. All right, so uh, I want to let's go and talk about a few different things though. First of all, so the NCAA wrestling finals just happened over the this past weekend. Um, they're really um, like they should. So for those of you who saw it, go ahead and uh, you know you can comment uh, your thoughts. But ultimately, I think what it shows is um, you know folk style wrestling, also Olympic freestyle, they, they tend to be more point games than uh, wrestling because, I mean, look, you have, at least in, uh, so for those of you who don't know, because also I did have friends who were, um, like, trying to, um, they were trying to watch, and they were like, I just don't know what's going on, um, because, yeah, there weren't, like, the, the matches were so short, and then again, people were getting points for things, and and uh, the casual viewer uh, doesn't quite understand what they're getting points for. Um, no pinning was really happening. Um, I think that, and then also too, the, uh, one of the things I definitely wanted to talk about was uh, stalemates, right? So if you so in catch wrestling, right, in original catch wrestling competition, when you basically you wouldn't really have a stalemate so much because usually when you see in folk style when guys were kind of caught in a position right and if it lasted a little bit too long then they would call it a stalemate they would break them up and then uh, start over from standing from neutral and if you have no time limit or a very long time limit like say in our in our events we have a 20 minute match then they you know, like they would play itself out or they would play themselves out where it's like you can't necessarily keep a hold on someone for 20 minutes straight right so something's going to happen uh there someone's going to work their way out of that position so there wouldn't necessarily be a stalemate right um so that just wouldn't really exist in catch wrestling but it exists in folk style and you saw uh, many people get stood back up, right? So um, that was the other thing. And uh, you know, basically from the uh, casual viewer, they didn't quite know what was going on. So I know people who would like, they, they tried hard to watch and then they just changed the channel. So uh, that's the unfortunate thing about wrestling. You'll see people talk about where it's like, um, they believe that, you know, the Olympics wouldn't be the Olympics uh, without wrestling, but I mean, with these short rounds, and basically, you know, the three three periods for folk style, right, and they're two minutes long, you, you're not going to be able to see wrestling. You're going to see what you can probably call like speed wrestling, where it's like people are trying to get points, as many points as they can, and usually it's like, um, uh, like points for getting takedowns, right? Because a lot of times something you can't necessarily – follow through to a pin oftentimes um, or like so like to, that's why in Olympic wrestling you'll see maybe someone will get the takedown and then they'll, they'll go to what's called a leg lace so they'll, they'll they'll wrap up someone's legs and then they'll roll them over because you can get points uh, by rolling someone over you're not pinning them but you're making them do a whole revolution and then if you can get them to do too many revolutions then you've won the match by points right so um, that's why you'll get people tuning out of wrestling because that doesn't necessarily show the dominance so much. Whereas if you're rolling someone over, you're not necessarily pinning them. And that becomes problematic for, from the perspective of a 
a spectator who doesn't necessarily know wrestling and maybe they want to get involved or whatever, or they, or they hear so many good things about wrestling from the MMA uh, community or the MMA crowd, right? Because wrestling can help you in an MMA situation or even just like a self-defense situation, right? So that can be the, like, from, say like from someone who's coming from hearing all these good things about wrestling and then all of a sudden they watch wrestling and they have no clue what's going on. It's going to be a problem for wrestling, right? And that's why it almost got kicked out. Uh, plus, you know, plus, uh, uh, you know, management and all that. There's different things about international wrestling uh, bodies that are problematic, right? Even in the United States, uh, you know, we've had a lot of even tragedies uh, with our lack of care for Olympic athletes and wrestlers in particular. So um, that was a huge problem. Also, too, uh, something I wanted to mention. So someone brought it up to me. I guess they, uh, some people don't know my background very much. Um, I've been doing catch wrestling for like over 10 years now, and I went several times right to train in Wigan. I also uh, brought Roy Wood, so the, the successor of legendary coach Billy Riley. So he is now the 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 coach for the snake pit in Wigan, the real snake pit, right? Um, uh, he, I brought him to Los Angeles, also to Iowa, to not only attend events, uh, but also to do trainings here in Los Angeles. Um, also, Roy awarded me like a special uh, coaches award for uh, being like the most improved of his students. Um, so, plus, you know, I've won several matches in England uh, at their events. So, just so you guys know a little bit more of my background and why I'm not just making things up, <laughs> not just uh, speaking out of uh, no experience or anything like that. So, uh, that's been brought to my attention too by you guys. So, uh, yeah, so I just wanted to kind of uh, let you guys know because, yeah, it's, it's sometimes like, you know, you'll I'll, I'll carry on and I might, I might not know that. Maybe a lot of you are, are new to this channel or to our live stream and stuff like that. So I just want to kind of uh, get those of you who are new up to date on who I am and how I've been doing catch wrestling for the longest time uh, and with the most legit sources. Also trained with Billy Robinson. Uh, I also went to train with him privately in Arkansas before he passed away. And also I train with uh, the Frank Gotch lineage. So that would be the current lineage holder is John Strickland. He is in uh, South Carolina and he comes out to Los Angeles and he'll be coming out to Los Angeles probably later on this year uh, to, to hold more trainings. Um, so you can't get more legit, right? So I just wanted to throw that out there because uh, yeah, one of you guys brought that to my attention too. So um so anyway, let's get to today's lesson. I kind of want to give you guys some pointers uh, directly from one of the greatest catch wrestlers of all time, Frank Gotch. We're going to be using uh, this book. This is actually the cover. Frank Gotch's uh, wrestling book. Uh, it was written by uh, an author who um, basically transcribed a lot of what he had to say. Um, so... So there's that. And so there's one thing that I kind of want to get started on. Like he has this whole chapter about wrestling tips, but th what he says at the end of this chapter is pretty cool. And I think uh, you guys should think about that first. So we'll kind of start from the end and go back to the beginning of that chapter because he gives a lot of great advice about uh, conditioning and stuff like that. So, but let's, I think what he says at the end is super duper important and he kind of like basically summarizes it really quick okay uh, a couple things right so he says above all things don't expect to become a proficient wrestler without going through a series of preliminary training and exercising which is a common failing among amateurs get strong gradually right bearing in mind that great speed is always necessary Right, so, and he talks about it's like necessary in every athletic endeavor, except for you know he lists a few exceptions where you don't necessarily need to be fast, but like say like he talks about like 
weightlifting and other things where it's like you just have to be able to lift heavy and you don't have to do it fast, right? Uh, but with regards for wrestling, speed is very, very important. And um, But the other thing, which is right at the beginning of that paragraph, was get good slowly and also you have to know that you have to, you're going to have to put in a lot of work, right? A lot of the preliminary foundation, right? That's what is the most important thing. Um, so since in wrestling, we don't necessarily, we don't have belts, like a belt system. Um, but I think you can kind of see like some of the, some of the wisdom about having a belt system where it's like someone will start off at a, as a white belt and they're kind of laying that foundation, right? So at least everyone is aware and even the practitioner is aware that they are at that stage and they can't kind of like, well, it happens, right? Like ego, right? will take over. And so someone will think that they're, they're so great that, uh, they're a white belt or a blue belt and, but they're, they should just be, they should just jump to, uh, brown or black or whatever. Um, but with wrestling in particular, you got to be doing all these fundamental things, learning the techniques, but also putting in the conditioning because in traditional catch wrestling, there was no time limit. So when you're at the highest level, you're getting guys, uh, who are, uh, equally skilled as you, same size, same strength. And, you know, you're in you're, there's no time limit, so you're going to have to wear them down or be worn down and beaten, right? Uh, so you got to be doing all these other things. You got to be doing the strength and conditioning, right? So let me give you the other main point, which is at the end of the chapter that uh, Frank really thinks is important. And I think is important too. Uh, so here it goes. Never lose your temper for an instant. Keep cool always and study every move of your opponent, and if possible, try to anticipate what he intends doing. That is half of the game. The other half is to try and deceive him as to your next movement. So those head fakes and all that. So basically, you want to try to get them to think you're going one way, and then you go the other way, um, or counter his counter, because if you know his moves, uh, you'll be able to counter his move or you can set it up where it's like, you know, he's strong at one thing. So you kind of leave it open for him to tr attempt his signature move. And then, but you'll be ready with the counter uh, when they attempt their signature move or something like that. He kind of, he kind of discusses that uh, his match against Hackenschmidt. And he said that he, he really studied uh, what like Hackenschmidt's like signature moves were. And so then uh, he wanted to put it into practice where um, he can get Hackenschmidt to uh, do his thing. And then so Frank would be ready to counter right? or ready with a counter move. Right? And he was able to, um, like he said, uh, actually in, this, in the same chapter, he, he mentions, um, he said if, he, if, the, if Hackenschmidt didn't tap out or give up, he definitely would have pinned him. But Hackenschmidt, uh, like, he was really, he was so scared of the toe hold. He thought Frank was going to break his ankle or his leg or whatever. So he tapped or he, he uh, verbally submitted. Um, but yeah, um, ultimately, so Frank necessarily, wasn't necessarily breaking people's legs or anything like that. Um, he uh, was using the toe hold uh, for rolling people over onto their back. So you're basically controlling the whole body with uh, the foot or the ankle. Okay, so with that being said, um, let's go ahead and go to the beginning of the chapter. Because Frank, he actually was a runner, big time runner. Um, he lived in Humboldt, Iowa, which is, uh, if you go there today, it's uh, really similar. His house is still there. Someone lives in his house. His birth house is a little bit outside of the downtown area. Uh, but... It's all surrounded by miles and miles of road and uh, corn fields. And um, so Frank would run. And uh, he actually mentions that in his things. Like um, uh, he says, similar to what Farmer Burns was saying. So, so we'll, we'll go and start here. Taken all in all, there's nothing that will develop a man's muscles and make him strong in mind and body and self reliant as wrestling. A young man would be very foolish to start in at once without any preliminary preparation 
on a rigorous course of training. He must season himself gradually by gymnastic work of a lighter character, increasing his tasks as he feels he is getting better and stronger, and he should not attempt any serious wrestling until he, his muscles are well e enough developed to withstand the unusual and severe strain which will be put upon them. All right. Um, and he says, yeah, you can practice your the different holds with the buddy and, and all that. Um, you can totally be doing all that stuff, but when you actually get down to, you know, wrestling or sparring, then it's going to be demanding. That grind is it can be very demanding. And you'll see even popular jiu-jitsu, like nogi practitioners. I think that, that's, that's been circulating around the internet where it's like uh, you have Nicky Ryan talking about how much he hates wrestling practice. Um because of that, that whole uh, grind aspect, because you're not uh, flopping on your back. If you get thrown onto your back, you you try to get out from uh, being face up. So I think that that's what keeps kind of like the movement going, the 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 grind going, right? So that can be very tiring. So you got to build up to it. And so then let's get to the next point. So I mentioned Frank Gotch being a runner. Well. Here, he, here it is in black and white, right? So uh, for the wind, so he says, for the wind, and this must not be overlooked, right? So that means it's important. Right? Take a course of running on country roads where it is possible. Where it is not, then run anywhere. A half mile will do if you haven't been used to it, right? Uh, so he says, oh, you know, you can be the judge of that, and then... Uh, move on to like don't go too long but then eventually you can you can work on uh, running longer distances yeah so work gradually so later on in the paragraph he says work gradually into a long easy stride and keep it up All right <laughs> he kind of makes a joke later where he says like uh, you know you wouldn't want to uh, uh, you wouldn't want to like just like run really hard and you're, even though you're not con like especially when you're not conditioned for it you don't, you don't want to be like a, you don't want to run really far and then get stranded right so um that is a problem where it's like if you just run out in a country road for miles and then uh, you can't run back because you're too tired okay and this is another point um so he says bear in mind that the object is, to be attained is the hardening of not one set of muscles, but of all the muscles in the entire body, as well as the heart and lungs. Bear in mind that wrestling in itself is the greatest of all athletic exercises, right? So you use your entire body to do these things. You're doing bridging. You're doing, so basically you're doing like squat type movements. You're doing pushing movements. So it's like a bench press, these types of things that uh, get isolated in workout movements right and different exercises uh but you're you're putting them all into practice when you wrestle right so that's why it's easy to call wrestling like say like the greatest of all athletic endeavors right because you're definitely going to be using these different types of motions and that's why the strength strength and conditioning is very very important and that's again so like that's why frank got talks about it and uh so so even though he's talking about it as like a preliminary thing, like doing the foundational stuff so that you can work your way into doing more wrestling, um, it, it, like once you get really proficient in wrestling, it, it means you still, you still got to do these things, right? He was, he was always a runner. He was always running. Um, right, so let me try to skip around here because those are, those are some of the main things. Um, so I think that's why, yeah, that's why I kind of let you guys know. Yeah, that's, that's pretty much it in a nutshell with his things where it's like, yeah, of course you want to, um, um, you definitely want to be setting that foundation up. You want to be uh, uh, like training, so drilling and drilling and then get really good at all the different moves, right? And then learn to then set up like fakes and different things where it's like maybe if you know what move the person's good at, then you can set it up where they attempt their move and like you 
counter attack with your counter move, right? So um, different things like that, right? So, oh, let me, let me, actually, let me tell you this. This is actually a pretty good thing. I forgot. Um, don't be, don't expect to be told everything, but use your eyes as well as your brains. Study out the different situations and try to figure out in advance what your opponent ten, intends to do. In that way, you'll be ready to block him. In beating Hackenschmidt, the world's champion, I had him all figured out in advance, and I knew what moves he intended to, intended to make in many cases before he put them into execution. And if he had not quit, I would have turned him on his back, just as I knew I would when he sh when we shook hands at the beginning of hostilities. Study out the counters for the different holds and always be prepared to squeeze out of a tight corner when the occasion arises. And then uh, actually someone already asked about the gotch toe hold, so let's, let's hear about it from Frank Gotch himself. In applying the toe hold, do so with the utmost care in order that you may not seriously maim your opponent you will appreciate how effective it is if it is properly done, right? And he says, of course, a book of this size will not encompass the entirety of wrestling. You see the book of this size is actually very, it's a very tiny book, right? Very tiny. Uh, this is actually is one of the original printing, so that's why the, it's, it's in pretty bad shape and the, the, the cover has fallen off. But uh, the wiz there's still a lot of wisdom in it, right? <laughs> so that's what I wanted to share with you. Um, let's go and get to your question here. So Adriano Ramos, uh, you know the gotch toe hold? Uh, yep, I, I do. And I think uh, we've done it in, uh, might have done it in a video. Uh, but there's definitely like one of my students, Nen Morales, he, uh, he's got, I think, a few gotch toe hold submission victories um in competition and i believe those videos are on our channel as well um so you can see that and i think actually one was uh, you can definitely you can definitely see it so uh, i think we've definitely uh, like if you look at i made a playlist where it's like all our short videos the vertical shorts where you know so uh, where it's just like TikTok, tock right so um Look on those. I made a playlist for all those, and then you should be able to find that one. I think it says Gotch Toe Hold in Competition or some, something like that. You should be able to find it easily. If not, you can find it on our TikTok channel um, as well. And also, um, uh, it's probably on our Instagram as well, but that's like a little bit harder to... You have to scroll down and then read all the captions and all that. But um, So check out the playlist here on YouTube. Um, and um, probably TikTok. Those are probably the easiest ways to find it. Right. Oh, you're welcome, Adriano. Um, I, let me see if, uh, I'm not sure if we did a tutorial on, on it though, but but maybe we will now that you brought it up, if you, especially if it's something you wanna learn. Um, it's definitely in our uh, Catch Wrestling Alliance Academy. So if you wanted to go more deeper into your uh, training, we do that um, through our online academy so that you can go, you can join that um, through our website, catchwrestlingalliance.com. Uh, we also have a new offering for you guys. So one of uh, my students who's this national champion, judo black belt, uh, we put together a series of the, of what he believes are the most uh, common and most uh, kind of important judo throws and how to apply them in no gi situation. So that's also up on our website. It's a it's a course where it's like you go over the variations, um, uh, like basically the entries of some of the most important judo throws in a nogi situation, plus follow throughs, um, which, which are more realistic than sport judo. Sport judo, you're always trying to get that ipon, or you're trying to get like the full points. So a lot of times people are rolling over the other person and not maintaining control to make sure you get like that pin position. Um, so we go over more of like the wrestling or MMA situation where you want to actually, you, you, you 
instead of rolling over the person, you actually want to stay on top of the person. All right. Hello from Perth. So Adriano again. Uh, hello from Perth, Western Australia. Our coach is from the Snake Pit Wigan. Okay, so you must train with Thomas Hilton. Do you train with Thomas? Um, hopefully you do, because uh, he's the only person from uh, who moved to Perth that uh, I know. He's uh, I've met him. He's a very nice man, and also his his family. I met his father and his sister, and who's also a good good wrestler, very good wrestler. Um, um, his whole family is really really nice. I have a picture of all of us together. Um, actually, no, I don't think Thomas was there at that time, but I have a picture with his dad and uh, sister and stuff after uh, an event in Wigan, uh, where I competed at. Um, as well, I don't actually. I don't think Thomas was there. I think Thomas had moved to Perth already. Uh, I believe, but I mean, I had met him before. I, mean, I would I would go year after year to 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 train in Wigan. So I had met him definitely. Pakistani, <laughs> Pakistani with a B. Have you ever had to grapple, go gym, and go to school? Uh, yes. Yes, I've been doing martial arts for a few decades now. So, uh, yes, yes. Even at university, I would I would still make time. Um, so it, it does get difficult, but usually the way you can kind of solve that problem, if you have like work, school, training, um, is just just be rich. No, I'm just just kidding. <laughs> just be rich. Quit. You know. I'm no, just kidding. No, what you have to do is actually break up your um, your workout. So, and this is actually, this is what they do for all the college athletes who do like the big sports, like, um, you know, like basketball and, and football and stuff. So they'll have like, say like a morning training and then you got to go to class and then you, then they'll do like the afternoon training. So, um, so that's, that's kind of what you have to do. You're going to have to break it up. So maybe you do your cardio in, you wake up and do cardio and then you do work or school or whatever. Uh, finish all that and then you come back and do uh, weights or grappling or whatever your sport is so you will have to uh, uh, get all these other things taken care of right so then uh, you can still be putting in the work so you're basically gonna have to do uh, multiple workouts in one day so two a days sometimes three a days uh, that's what that's usually what they call it two a days so it's like it might you might be doing the cardio then the grappling or cardio weights, and then the next day doing cardio grappling or you know, stuff like that. So, uh, yeah, you have to break it up. So sometimes it can get a little tiring where it's like, oh, I worked out, and then I went to work or went to class, and then now I got to go back to working out. Um, it can it can be tiring, but I mean, uh, if you want to, um, if you want to be competing, uh, you, you got to do it. You got to do it that way then, because yeah, your life uh, you, you still got to go to work, or you got to go to class. It's very important. Uh, Adriano, in your opinion, can a man still be good and learn catch wrestling in his 40s? Yes. And that's actually what uh, Frank Gotch uh, talks about in, his, in this book in particular that I mentioned. Um, he talks about the even at that time, unfortunately, Frank, he died around uh, age 38 uh, from a disease that affected his kidneys that I guess is curable nowadays, but not, not in his time. Um, but uh, a lot of people considered uh, like age 40 to be the time when someone was mature, like mentally enough to uh, put, put into practice all the, say like the, the combination of the, the strength and conditioning plus the techniques, like knowing better when to apply the different counters and, and whatnot. So that's... Um, so age 40 was kind of like that that time. So Frank was already really great world champion, but he did lose. You know, he, he lost a few times, definitely. So um, uh, a lot of people, including himself, mentioned like the age 40 being that that year or that age, right? So if um, I would say still kind of follow, if you, if you have done no type of grappling or anything like that, uh, follow his advice about like building up slowly. Um, and um uh like you know like doing all the strength and conditioning to strengthen your body because really a lot of times um these injuries that occur 
occur because the body's not well conditioned. You're not doing the, the flexibility stuff. Like, he, oh, I didn't, he didn't really uh, mention that in the text, but yeah, you got to be stretching and stuff like that. That really prevents injury. Um, so yeah, that's why uh, a lot of these injuries happen. I mean, even in pro sports, happens in soccer a lot uh, where people get all these hamstring injuries, but they tend to be uh, really due to lack of flexibility and stuff. Okay, let's get to your question here. So, um, Pakistani again. Uh, would you recommend lifting and lifting weights on the same day? Um, I don't know what lifting and lifting weights means. All right, so, whatever uh, weightlifting regimen, um, uh, you can totally do it. So, um, uh, what what you kind of want to do though with the weightlifting is. Uh, you can probably break it up depending on your your schedule too. So you won't necessarily do exercise for full body, right? So you can kind of uh, depending on your schedule. So like if you you can just do maybe upper body exercises and then cardio and then maybe a little bit of grappling, right? Or you know your grappling training, or if you want to do say like Monday you do cardio and grappling and then Tuesday you can do cardio and a full body weightlifting routine, no grappling, right? And then the next day you can do cardio and grappling, right? Some, something like that where you can kind of break it up. Uh, you don't want to be doing full body weightlifting like every day because that, that, will, that will wear down your body. Um, uh, stuff that is um, like submaximal, like cardio, that helps build up your cardiovascular endurance. So, you know, Frank Gotch calls it like the heart and lungs. Uh, even in Chinese language, they, they refer to that as heart and lungs exercise. Uh, that is so submaximal, right? So it means that you're not going to you're not going to be sprinting uh, until you're just like fatigued, where you where you're going to fall over. <laughs> uh, if you, as long as you don't do that, you can run for a long time. It's going to help build up your heart and lungs, and so that you can probably do every day. I, I, I you know, well, officially you should do it about you can do it up to five to six days a week. And everyone should have a rest day uh, to allow your body to recover better. So, um, you know, so you can, so just think you have five to six days of your week where you have to divide up your cardio weights and, you know, of course, flexibility training. So flexibility should be done at the end of, you know, workouts, right? So if you want to take your flexibility to the next level and maybe include some kind of uh, really long I say like a yoga class where it's like saying here in Los Angeles, a lot of our yoga classes are over an hour long. They're often like an hour and 15 minutes, sometimes an hour and a half long. So if you're going to be doing that, then you got to take that in consideration to you know, your whole work schedule. So then, yeah, maybe you could be doing cardio, grappling, and then follow it up with, by taking uh, that, that hour and 15 minute long yoga class. Right. Actually, I was... Um, I was kind of doing that uh, a little bit uh, when the schedule worked out where I was able to, you know, do cardio and then quickly uh, make it over to, to do a jujitsu class. And then that one ended with just enough time to go to the nearby yoga studio to do um, uh, like an hour and 15 minute long class. But so that, that that's like three hours, over three hours of working out. So luckily it happened kind of in the evening. So I was able to kind of uh, block out that time. But again, so said like if, if I had to work around that time, you know, you'd have to break it up, right? So uh, so I'm kind of just staying along the lines of what Pakistani was asking, where it's like, if you have, you have, if you have life things, uh, you have to do your life. You know, you have to, and, and education is very, very important. So I, um, I would say, you know, don't, don't drop out, you know, stay in school and, uh, make sure you finish your studies. So you're just going to have to uh, work accordingly, right? So yeah, break up those workouts, and you'll you'll be able to get you'll be able to get those things in. Um, so just know, like divide your week up. You got five to six days of a week of working out, and uh, so you got to you know divide those things up accordingly, All right? And make sure you don't get injured. Right? So that, that's the other thing. So but these strength and conditioning things, the flexibility training. Uh, that all is what helps prevent injury. So that's going to keep you uh, doing your grappling or whatever other sport uh, for a very, very, very long time. Right. All right. 
All right, so feel free to keep asking questions. Um, I've kind of, uh, I think I want to just leave it there with regards to Frank Gotch. Uh, I'll give you uh, like some more of his tips uh, in the next lesson um, or in the next, the next uh, live stream that we do. Um, but yeah, feel free to keep asking questions. Um, I also wanted to kind of let you guys know, so we're, we, um, we're here in Los Angeles and we are um, kind of dropping out of like these severe uh, COVID case numbers. So uh, we should be able to be doing more events and stuff uh, pretty soon. A lot of people here are getting vaccinated and all that. So then the, the, the number of cases uh, is dropping in this county and in the county south of us. So they're allowing more things to open up like gyms and um, movie theaters and all that. So uh, we should be able to do more things, uh, you know, have more events, have more matches and stuff uh, very, very soon. So uh, stay tuned for that. Uh, definitely looking forward to that. Um, we've been waiting for that for what I go over a year now, right? With the, Since we're, it's been over a year for the, the lockdown and all that, especially for Los Angeles, because we have a really high population here. Uh, so a lot of people got sick. Um, so, okay, Marcus James. Let me see. Hi, all. I am 45 years old, Lancashire working man who trains at Wigan. All right. Uh, very good, Marcus. Um, yeah, please keep it up. Please keep it up. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Well, hopefully we can meet one day. Hopefully I can go back to uh, to Wigan. I miss everybody there and really enjoyed uh, being there and uh, competing there. Uh, it was a really great experience, and uh, I love Roy Wood a lot. Uh, I think he's really one of the best coaches uh, alive, and um, uh, you can learn a lot from him. So please uh, keep it up. Keep training. Um, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, thank you for uh, commenting. So hopefully we can get some more uh, events going uh, very, very soon, uh, barring any kind of uh, what increase in COVID cases where they lock us down again or whatever. Um, so hopefully everything runs smoothly um, so that we can get back to uh, doing things. You know, we, we, you know, we had events in Singapore. And, um, so you know, right now, I think all Americans are, are barred from even going into Singapore without uh, like a work permit or something like that. Um, so let's, uh, let's kind of keep our fingers crossed. Hopefully everyone actually tries to uh, stay safe and you know do whatever you can to keep the cases down and all that so we can get back to having more events. Uh, you know, because big events even, you know, got like ADCC got postponed and all that. So uh, let's try to work together to uh, get things, get things back to normal. Um, so I already mentioned, um, all that, like our, the new judo class that we offer on, um, uh, on our website, but also too, if you want to help out, you can, um, even, you know, if you, if you like, um, like if you like what we're doing, you can also contribute to our channel. Uh, we, uh, even as little as uh, $2 a month, um, helps out a lot. Uh, also we have at a, a $5 a month. Um, you can do the, you can become a member of our YouTube channel and we have a lot of other videos that are, um, available only for members. So you can, you would have access to all those. We have some that are uh, some matches. We also have uh, a presentation that we did in the home of the hometown of Frank Gotch. I mentioned earlier, he lived in Humboldt, Iowa. So he used to train outside in a park there. And there's a statue there now of him, but he used to train um, outside in public. And so people would gather from all around just to watch him train. So we did a very special uh, presentation there uh, for the community. So that's all, um, but that's available for you to see if you're a channel member. Um, so, and we try to add other different uh, variations of different techniques. Um, so, Feel free to support us in that way because it really helps to keep real wrestling alive. And 
Um, so just you guys know where, where does that come from? Keep Real Wrestling Alive. That actually comes from a letter that was written by uh, uh, William Robinson. A lot of you guys know of him as Billy Robinson. Um, he was a Wigan wrestler and he was one of my coaches. And he wrote a letter to one of my friends who was one of the guys who trained with both Billy and Roy Wood extensively. So he, he, so this man is named Osamu Matsunami. He is now the, the, the head coach at Riley's Gym Kyoto in Japan. So uh, he went back and spent time training uh, with Billy and Roy, going back and forth between Japan and Wigan. And um, uh, Billy wrote a letter to him uh, when they were, when they, they told, you know, basically they, they gave him their blessing, right, to open up the gym and call it Riley's Gym, which was the original name of, uh, or is originally what they called the gym where Roy and Billy and, all these other, like Billy Joyce, all these other wrestlers uh, trained with the man named Billy Riley, who is a legendary coach. And um, so that's why in Kyoto, the gym is called Riley's Gym Kyoto. It's not called Snake Pit Kyoto, right? The, the whole Snake Pit uh, name came later, right? That was the nickname uh, that, it, that it got later, right? So uh, it's really a special uh, gym, right? To be, you know, it's very special to to for that gym to be called Riley's gym all right and so Billy Robinson wrote a, that letter and um, in it he's he states you know let's keep real wrestling alive and so that's what we strive to do here at the catch wrestling alliance um, and so we hope we can inspire you all to keep real wrestling alive as well okay so I think we'll go ahead and um, end it here Let's see, you got a couple more. Oh, so Marcus, you competed. Marcus Marcus James competed. So hopefully uh, we can uh, see you soon. Maybe you can compete in the United States one day. Okay. All right. Well, I think we'll go ahead and sign off here. I uh, just wanted to uh, uh, hopefully, uh, I want to test out this new equipment as well. So hopefully everything, uh, you're able to hear me and all that. Uh, so hopefully everything uh, is clear from now on. All right. Okay. Well, thank you for watching. Uh, thank you for listening. Uh, we'll see you very, very soon.